it didn't exist or it got deleted or something weird happened to it. I don't know, but now there'll be um, some stuff for it. So, all right. So in chapter 12, what you have to do is we have to, we're going to be doing regression. All right. And all of these are going to be simple linear regressions. I'm just going to pick this one here. Uh, problem number two, because it has fewer points and I don't have to type in as much. Okay. So we have to put both our X and Y values in. We have to determine which one we think is going to be the independent or the X value and which one we think is the dependent or the Y value, because eventually we're going to graph them and we want to be able to have one of the pieces going along the bottom and one of the pieces going on the side. Usually in these all of these problems, this is the x, this is the y. So um, I have my values. I have my three, my four point sixteen. Thirty-two, sixty-four, and two hundred. Then I have my prices. Three point fifty-nine, four point thirty-nine. Nine and nine point nine nine. Okay. So I have my weights, my my fluid ounces, and I have my cost. Now, first question asks is graph it. So to graph these, I need to go to stat plot. So second stat plot. I'm gonna just use the first one because I'm it's already on. It's on. So if it's not on, click over to on and click on so it's on hit enter this here is a, is a um is a scatter plot so i don't have to do anything it's asking me where which things i want so if you have something else make sure the first one is chosen so if you had a histogram just make sure if you'd already had a histogram just make sure it's the first one hit enter It'll put in, ask it list one, list two. And then these are just what kind of dots do you want to see? So I like the bigger ones because I'm blind. Um, and then we're going to go to zoom and stat. So number nine. And I can see here's my graph. So I can see it's going up. Well, this is going down. This is going down. So those two can't be right because they're going up and we, those are going in the wrong direction. So it's going to be one of these two. And I can see that it has this little curve and then a dot, you know, far away. Well, that's because this here is, you know, five bucks, you know, and this is 10 bucks. Well, my points here all seem to be off, you know, numbers. This is really ex almost exactly what my graph looks like. I have this little curve and then I have this pot, this dot way far away. So that's why it's this one. And then it asks, does it look like there's some kind of relationship? It's either going to be yes or no. If the points are all over the place, it's no. If it looks like it has some kind of, you know, upward or downward mobility, then that yes. We, you know, this has some kind of relationship. This has some kind of relationship, not a great one, but uh, this has some kind of weird relationship. You know, so they all seem to have some kind of relationship. So that's why it's yes. Then it asks us to find the regression line or line of least squares or uh, many other names for it. To do that, we're going to go to stat and calc. And there's two linear regressions and they're far away from each other for some reason. Uh, the first one is an AX plus B form and the other one is an A plus BX form. And this asks for it in A plus BX form. So make sure you choose number eight. And then where are my X and Y values? List one, list two. We're going to make sure we, you probably don't have the catalog on. So I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. Um, I don't have any frequencies. I hit calculate. And it gives me all of my information. If you're not getting R squared in R, that's because the um, 
uh, information is not on and we have to, to turn it on. We have diagnostic is not on. It's not on by default. So um, don't think you turned it off by accident because I don't even know where it is. Uh, we just need to turn it on. So to get to it, if you're not seeing these, second catalog and go down to D. And then we want diagnostic on and it's now done. So if it was off, you weren't getting that. So um, let me go back to stat, calc number eight. So now I have my diagnostics. Here's my values, my A, this is my Y intercept. This is my slope. All right. What is the correlation coefficient? Correlation just tells me how strong of a relationship is there. And so that's this number, this R. So I type that in. And is it significant? Well, we find out if it's significant by looking at a table that's in chapter 12. And I added it here. So we take how many things there are. So there were four of them. We subtract off two. We get this number, the degrees of freedom. Is my R bigger than that value? And we just ignore the negative, positive and negative sign. So um, we just, if there's a negative, we just take it off. And so is it 0.999 bigger than 0.950? Yes. So therefore it's significant. That's kind of how that works. If it's smaller, then it would be no, and the rest of it would be in, not necessary. Then it's asking us to calculate the price of certain sizes. Well, we have an equation here. We just use it. So it's 3.115 plus 0 0.034 times, and in this case, I have a 30 ounce car, so times 30. And that's what I get for my value. And it wants two decimal places because it's money. So you're just using um, the equation that they've given you to find a number and an estimated value at that. And they want you to do it a couple times. And then um, does it appear to have that a line is the best thing? Um, yeah, because, you know, it looks like things are in a straight line-ish. You know, we have a 99.9, you know, 9.9990R. So yeah, it's a good, real, good real regression line. Uh, it's strong. You know, it looks like things are going linear. If we had a kind of a curve or parabola, then it would be a bad thing because the line would be good for one side or the other, but not both. So um, this here looks more like an exponential. This here looks more like a logarithm. This one here looks like a um, like kind of like this. It's just it's upside down. So, um, and then is there an outlier? An outlier would stand out. Would be like if I had this value way up here, or way down here, and because it was on sale, that would be weird and be affecting the line. But because these lines, these points are all kind of straight, there's no outliers in that. And it doesn't have to do with the, how far away something is. It's not like the outliers that we would have said if we'd had a single thing. Like if we were just looking at this list, I might say that 200 might be an outlier because it's so far away from the median, um, or you know, from the uh, Q3. But you know, it it really has to do with point the the points that are all combined. Um, so if we look at this, notice these kind of like, you know, look. This could be an outlier if it was because then it went drop way back down, you know. So it's going up and then drops. So maybe um, this one would be an outlier. Uh, here, this one would be an outlier because we can see that it doesn't really fit the rest of the graph. You know, something happened in this year that that messed everything up. So when we look at the graphs, we look to see is there a point that sticks out from the rest of the graph to, to see if there's outliers. 
Um, and then it asks us about 300 ounce, you know, laundry detergent. Well, if it's not in this range, if the X's aren't between 16 and 200, we can't use it. If the X's aren't between 1912 and 2008, we can't use it. So I can't use this equation to find out what happened in 1900, and I can't find out what happens in 2020. Like it doesn't, it's not in that space, so I can't use it because we don't know. There may be things that happened outside of that range that would change those, that change the validity of it. And then the last one just kind of asks you to explain what this means. What does um, the slope, the slope is just the value that you put here in the B, all right? And what does it mean? It means that as weight goes up, the number of ounces goes up, then the cost also goes up in this case because it's positive by a certain amount. If it would, if it was negative, it would be going down. So those things. Yes, professor. Down. Yes. Professor, please explain the slope again. The slope. Sure. So, in this, so the slope means that every ounce that you add to the bottle. The price goes up 0 0.34 dollars, so 3.4 cents for every ounce that you add to a bottle of soap. <coughs> That's all, because remember, it's just slope is rise over run, so it's either going to go up or down depending upon what happens as we go along. So as we go along this graph, along the bottom, we're adding cost to our bottle of soap. So if I had a 150 ounce bottle of soap, I'd expect the point to be somewhere around here. Like it'd be, it'd be going in this, because it's a almost perfect straight line. It's not exact, but I'd, I'd expect it to be somewhere in this range. I wouldn't expect it to be more than this. I wouldn't expect to see a $12 bottle for 150. And I wouldn't expect to see a $4 bottle. I'd expect to see somewhere, you know, around seven, eight bucks. It should be like somewhere in this range. It should be it should continuously go up as we go as we add weight to it. That's what this tells me. Whereas in this one, we have a slope that's negative. So as the years go by, we expect the people to get faster. So in 1970, I wouldn't expect it to see an 80 second you know race, and I wouldn't expect to see a, a 50 second race. I'd expect to see somewhere between 65 and and 55 you know 55 i'd expect it to be in between these two numbers because it should keep going down that's all so that's what the slope tells us it tells us it goes up or down a certain amount every for every one thing that we add to the x so as x increases something happens to the y and depending upon the degree the the positive or negative, the direction is what's going to happen. So if X, is, if it, the slope is positive, as X increases, Y increases. If it's negative, as X increases, Y decreases. And we de decreases on whatever these things are. So in this case, it's by seconds. And as we add a year, in this case, it's as we add ounces, we add dollars, you know, or pennies, I guess, really, because so. That's what it's trying to explain. What you know, they're just asking in English, what does slope mean? That's all. And then all of these are exactly the same. You're just, you know, this one here, um, it asks about decades. So you're stopping at you know 20 at 1991 to 2000 because this isn't a full decade. So we can't, we don't want to use it. And they're using they're gonna ask us, you know, to predict how many major hurricanes we should have with nine and then does it make sense and the answer is no because nine is not in the range of the rest of the number of hurricanes so um not that it's outside of the range of the years but it's outside of the range of the number of hurricanes that we use to predict how many major hurricanes there are and again you'll find slope and you'll find um the um uh, um is it significant or not? And here they're asking, and they give you the values. Um, 
So, and then here they ask you to, to calculate some more stuff. So those are the things you'll have to do because these two questions are related. So it's really just one question. Um, but uh, that's all. So those are what you're going to be asked to do in chapter 12. And I'm going to stop the recording um, because now.